What's up and welcome to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're comparing the Steam Deck, which we're gonna unbox right here, and the Lenovo Idea Pad 3, which we're gonna unbox right here. Now, we're gonna be, basically, the goal of this live stream is to help you guys decide should you go for a gaming laptop, a cheap gaming laptop, or a Steam Deck if you're on a very limited budget? Uh, for example, you could go with like a Steam Deck and like a Chromebook if you need something that's more of a laptop type thing, um, or just a really low budget machine. Um, another alternative is instead of getting two separate devices, you could go for a slightly more expensive gaming laptop. And I'm gonna go over uh, basically all the pros and cons here. We're gonna do some actual testing, some benchmark uh, results from uh, using these machines uh, in a bunch of different games. I've got God of War, Cyberpunk 2077, Elden Ring. What else we got? Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I think is installed. Apex Legends, I believe. I've not tested all these games on the Steam Deck. I just download them, played like Dying Light 2. That's another one we're gonna do. Um, and we're gonna try to do some benchmarks side by side, see what kind of comparable performance you're getting when you pay for the Steam Deck versus a gaming laptop. Now I do gotta give a pre, preface basically that I bought this gaming laptop for $549. I actually have the receipt I can show it to you guys. Uh, I did go ahead and screenshot it just to verify that I did buy it for that price, but the price since has gone up. I got it during a holiday sale back during uh, like November, December. So uh, it was it was on sale for that price several times though since, and I would not pay full price for this RTX 3050 laptop right now. It's currently, I believe, priced like $800 or $900, depending on where you buy it and what specs you buy it at. So that's just kind of the full context I'll give you. Also, Steam Deck does start at a lower price point, but we did get the 649 version in this uh, box right here. So there are some lower end versions of the Steam Deck that cost even less and some lower end gaming laptops that can cost less too. So there are a lot of variety of price points that you can enter for both gaming laptops and for the Steam Deck. And I'm going to talk about those. I'm going to talk about uh, whether you should also consider going up to maybe like a thousand or $1,200 gaming laptop versus like this $600 gaming laptop as well. So we're going to try to do a variety of perspectives today. And I just hope that it's useful for anyone that is interested in a portable gaming solution. Let's get into the unboxing. Let's start with the Steam Deck first, and then we'll get into the Lenovo Idea Pad. Now, I did do a dedicated unboxing for this guy already, so I'm not going to do a full normal unboxing for that laptop. Uh, there, you can check my live stream history if you want to check out the full unboxing for the Lenovo Idea Pad. That said, we are doing a full unboxing for the Steam Deck today. Okay. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and kick this off. I'm super excited to try out the Steam Deck. I got to try it out just a little bit after testing the game just to make sure everything's functioning, but I haven't got to play, like, I only played Dying Light 2 for a little bit. That's it, basically. So I need to test the other games and see how they run, all right? So this is gonna be super fun. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So this is my gaming laptop comparison list. If you haven't checked it out, there's a link in the description down below. You can look up some of the very best deals that money can buy on gaming laptops uh, right inside of this list. And I would recommend this, uh, if you're looking for a really good deal right now, this MSI Delta 15 for 899 for under a thousand bucks is pretty tough to beat. Um, you got a 240 hertz full HD display with a graphics card that can definitely power a mini games at 240 frames per second um, with an eight core high powered Ryzen chip in this guy. So very nice machine for the money, especially since it comes with 16 gigs of RAM at this price point and a one terabyte SSD. That's just phenomenal value. Um, that said, let's take a look at the Steam Deck. All right. So the Steam Deck is designed to be a competitor to like the Switch as well as the, uh, you know, like the old PlayStation Vita or like, you know, any of these handheld portables that have come out. There's also a uh, Razer uh, handheld. Let me also pull that up real quick. Edge, yeah. So I got my hands on this at CES. This was really cool. I liked my time with it. This though is more, uh, it's an Android gaming uh, handheld. It does 144 Hertz uh, AMOLED display. So it's a gorgeous AMOLED display, much better and higher resolution than the Steam Deck. It is also thinner and lighter than the Steam Deck and the controls on it felt really good. 
but this thing is not going to do full PC gaming on its own. You only have Android games with the Razer Edge. Here's the Razer Edge video, um, and it's and it's cheaper than the Steam Deck, or at least three ninety nine for the base model, right? So that's uh, the same price as the base model for the Steam Deck, and uh, I did enjoy my time with it. I think it's pretty cool, but this, in my opinion, is not so much a PC gaming device as it is a PC streaming device. So you could sit on the couch if you're gonna mainly play on the couch and use this. Um, and you could do that for the Steam Deck too if you wanna pair it with a laptop. Uh, looking at the Steam Deck technical specs, we got 399 for the 64 gig. All right, you get a carrying case with it and you do also uh, get slower RAM with this, or so, slower storage. It's basically not as fast as storage. For 529, you step up to a 256 gig NVMe SSD, all right? And that faster storage is gonna let you load games a little faster. I did notice the loading in Dying Light 2 took a long time, so I can't imagine what the load time would be with this slower uh, storage speed. Uh, and then the 649 version that we've got for today is got uh, the fastest largest storage, so it's got faster storage, 512 gig SSD. It's got anti-glare etched glass on it to prevent glaring, which is gonna be helpful, especially if you wanna game a little more outside though. I don't think the display is even bright enough to really game outside very well, but yeah, it's gonna depend on how, not direct sunlight, maybe in like shade, it would be okay-ish. You get an exclusive carrying case with the 512 gig. We'll take a look at that carrying case and you get an exclusive virtual keyboard theme. Wow, okay. Uh, now, the fundamental idea of the Steam Deck is that portability meets power. You're getting a Zen 2 AMD processor with an RDNA 2 GPU combined in one, and it utilizes uh, LP DDR, uh, DDR5 uh, memory, and I believe this is a unified memory between the CPU and GPU. I believe. And so basically it's trying to maximize your efficiency, right? It's trying to maximize your power efficiency and it's supposed to only be four to 15 watts for both the CPU and GPU combined, which makes it so you can actually game on portable battery life. That's the huge differentiator between this, the Steam Deck, and most gaming laptops, being able to game on the go away from the wall outlet, okay? Now, battery life is still pretty questionable on the Steam Deck, but if you use like an external USB-C power hub, it actually is not too bad, all right? The display here is super important to understand. If you're gonna buy the Steam Deck, you need to lower your expectations compared to most gaming laptops. Almost all gaming laptops have a, you know, 120 hertz, 144 to 240 hertz, or higher refresh rate display, and this is only a 60 hertz display. That is... That is probably arguably the biggest drawback to it. And there's a reason why they only went with 60 Hertz because there's very few games given the low power GPU CPU that would actually push more than 60 frames per second consistently. Um, so, so think about the Steam Deck not so much as a competitive multiplayer gamer, but more so a casual single player games. And if you do do multiplayer games, you can, but I wouldn't expect you to compete that well in multiplayer games because of the 60 hertz display. Now you can hook this Steam Deck up to an external monitor and I do hope we can test that today. I wanna to try hooking, hooking up the Steam Deck to the uh, GP or my projector up there and try using that to play some games. Um, though that's obviously gonna make any kind of graphical, you know, minimal graphic settings on the Steam Deck because you have to tune down Steam Deck settings in order to get things to run smoothly. So. Basically, you have to taper your expectations for the Steam Deck because they had to do a lot of compromises to get everything to run in such a portable package, right? So that's the, that's the essentials of the specs. You do get a USB-C power supply, which does 45 watts, and you get a 40 watt hour battery, says two to eight hours of gameplay. I was getting like two and a half, three in the ish in that range. So uh, then you have a micro SD card slot, so you can expand the memory with just a uh, micro SD card slot. And for USB out, you can use DisplayPort 1.4 to power like something like the projector. That's how I'm gonna try it. I've got a USB, uh, USB-C to HDMI. I believe I have that. If not, I might have to use it on my monitor. Um, but we're gonna try to do some 1080p gaming if we can. Um, 
using the monitor or projector. Now, here is the specs on the laptop. You can see I bought this on December 5th, and it right now costs $899, but uh, I paid $549 for mine because I got it on sale, all right? And sales on this kind of laptop happen pretty frequently. And you can also, right now, I saw an open box item for this laptop right here. Open box for $631. So if you're willing to do an open box, you can get it for the exact same price as the Steam Deck right now, even without a sale. Okay, so that's why I do think this comparison is very fair between the gaming laptop and the Steam Deck. That said, there are gonna be even cheaper laptops out there that has like a GTX 1650 or an RTX 3050. And both of those are gonna be in the same ballpark of performance as what we're gonna see from the 3050 Ti today. And they're gonna be even cheaper than this laptop, okay? Now the main downside to this laptop, uh, we've got a full HD 120 hertz display, Ryzen 5 5600H, but we only have eight gigs of memory, which is gonna really chug on some games in PC gaming. So that's kind of a, a big downside here, but given our price point, you can definitely slap another eight gig stick in here and get your memory upgraded. Another big downside is we're only getting 256 gig of SSD space, but considering our price point, at least my price point at 549, I could probably upgrade the RAM and maybe even the SSD to a larger SSD and still be pretty dang competitive with the Steam Deck's pricing. So it all depends on what price you end up paying. In general, I do think this gaming laptop, when you fully tune it out with a bigger SSD and a larger uh, RAM setup, uh, you're gonna pay a little bit more for the gaming laptop, right? Okay, so. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the unboxing of the Steam Deck. Here is the box. This is exactly as it came shipped to me, just like this. Uh, you can see we've got some nice styling on the external box. Let me go ahead and bring the, the light down over here. Uh, we've got this nice overview of the Steam Deck, kind of showing you if you press this button, you get your Steam menu. You press this button, you get in-game options and like other settings. Um, so that's kind of cool little, cool little guy there. All right, so let's take a look at the power brick. All right, so here is the power brick. This is a 45 watt power brick. Um, it's chickeny, so it's not made by Valve. Yeah, okay, so it's 15 volts by three amps, so 45. And uh, yeah, so the, cow the power cable here is not that long either. It's only gonna be about five feet long from the wall, wherever you plug this in. So that's gonna be a, a, a real limiter for some people. All right. But still, it's nice that this is super portable, right? That's kind of the key. This, this Steam Deck is gonna be all about portability. Um, you're, you're basically, the, the focus of the Steam Deck is definitely like bare bones graphics, but you're still playing your games uh, and you're taking it with you. That's kind of the, the fundamental idea. Your games are going places. That's kind of their mantra here. It's, it's definitely a big focus of like, you get to take your games with you. And in PC gaming, that's not typically what you can do, right? Because gaming laptops usually suck pretty bad on battery life. Their battery life, uh, for gaming and the performance on battery life usually is pretty dang awful, right? So, all right, so here is a wrap. This came plastic wrapped like this in case your box got wet. Um, I don't think it's waterproof, but still, it's a nice little wrap, nice touch that they, they covered it. So here is your carry case. And interesting, I guess this is for the power brick. So the power brick can go into here. I actually hadn't noticed this. And let's just try this real quick. So we'll put the power brick into here. I don't know, can you put the power brick inside? I don't think you can, but maybe. And you just put that right like that. Shaboom, your power brick's going with you. Throw this in your backpack uh, or your suitcase or wherever you wanna take it with you. Or you can just carry it with the carry handle. I like that. That's a nice portable case and it seems high quality and it's a hard shell case. So that should protect your Steam Deck pretty dang well 
as well from Knox and Impacts. It doesn't seem like it's a hard, hard shell, but it's fairly hard shell, all right? Uh, Lee Lisi says, Steam Deck is great. I play Hogwarts on mine. It runs like Liquid Gold. It's such an awesome system. Well, we'll have to see how Hogwarts plays. It didn't seem to play that good when I loaded it just to make sure it could load in. But maybe through some more optimization, we can make it run better, right? So, so here's the Steam Deck right here. Yeah, seven inches. It's supposed to go up to 400 nits brightness, peak brightness, but it's only 60 hertz refresh rate. The resolution is also very low at 1280 by 800. All right, let's go ahead and take the Steam Deck out. It comes with a microfiber cable that has a Steam Deck logo. That's pretty cool. Let's try out the, uh, let's try out this microfiber real quick to try to clean off some fingerprints. Beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead and just do an overview of the buttons and inputs you have on the Steam Deck. Right here on the left, you can see we've got our left touchpad. This Steam Deck has a lot of inputs actually, right? So we've got our Steam button, our touch input. This has haptic feedback on it. We've got directional pad. We got like a menu button. We've got a uh, joystick. This is clickable. This joystick is a clickable joystick. You can hear it. And uh, then the touch, this screen is a touch screen, I believe. Um, and then, so that's gonna allow you to play touch enabled games. And then on the right side, we also have the dot, dot, dot. This is gonna let you pull up additional settings. We got another touch pad. So if you wanna do touch pad aiming or uh, use a mouse inside of uh, windows or something, you can do that. And then you got another joystick, another menu button, and then you got X, A, Y, and B buttons here. Going along the top, we've got the uh, volume up and down, headphone port, exhaust. Yes, this has active air cooling in it and it does need it to keep the power going. And it is, it is audible, you can hear the fans. We've got USB-C input and our power button. For our shoulder buttons, we've got a shoulder on each side and we've got triggers on the right and left. And then we've got additional R4, R5, L4, L5 buttons that you can, you can press these with your index and middle fingers for additional functionality such as like jump or reload or access your inventory, stuff like that. You can map those to additional functionalities. So I really do like the controls and the feel, at least with my big hands. Um, you know, I'm six foot and I do have large hands. So for someone like me, this is great. If you have small hands, you might struggle to touch these buttons. Uh, well, at the same time using these buttons up top, right? So, uh, if you're shorter or you're buying this for a child, uh, this layout may not be ideal, but I think most people will get it to work. Okay, all right. It'll be okay. All right. So let's go ahead and power the steam deck on. There we go, so now it's coming on. And I did update this already. Okay, so I really do like the uh, the over, I guess the interface that it comes with. You can see all the games that I've got installed. Uh, we've got Dying Light 2, Hogwarts, Cyberpunk, Apex, Witcher 3, Tomb Raider, God of War, Elden Ring. Uh, I don't have Flight Simulator. All of these I don't think are installed. Let me see if I can install 3D Mark. Let me, I'll go ahead and get that installing while we're gonna go over the laptop. Right away, I can tell this thing is a monster. It's a huge handheld. It's it's much bigger than a Switch, uh, but it's got better ergonomics than the Switch. It's much more comfortable in your hand than the Switch. Um, but it's it's so much bigger than a than the, 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 the Razer Edge that I did hands-on at CES. It, it was, okay, so the, it's, it's letting you know the controls. You're gonna use this to control the mouse, and then you use the right and left triggers to click, okay? So the volume button does give you an overlay right here, indicating your volume. I like that. If you press the Steam button, it comes up with your Steam settings. So you've got home, library, store, Friends, media, downloads, and settings, and you can also turn the lap, uh, turn this thing off with that button. If you press the right dot dot dot, you've got brightness, audio, microphone, uh, airplane mode. Let me go to the top here. So you have your notifications, 
your friends, brightness up and down audio. And within this, you can see I can use my touch. Uh, you can see I used, you can turn off Bluetooth, turn on Wi-Fi, do airplane mode, do night mode. You've got rumble and haptics that you can turn on and off as well. For battery, you can see we've got multiple performance overlay modes, and we're gonna set it uh, to be like super detailed, showing us our full performance overlays. And we want this to be very high, basically maximum performance. It's, we're basically gonna try to, to test this at maximum possible frame rate, right? All right, so that's kind of your settings in, in there. So here's our overlay that we're gonna be able to see. I'm gonna zoom in a little more. So you can see, uh, we'll be able to see the CPU usage, the uh, FPS. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see our actual averages for FPS, but we'll still be able to see a lot of data uh, when we're doing these benchmarks today, all right? It's, it's kind of buggy right now. I'm trying to get it to, uh, there we go. So let's go ahead and let's just try running it. As it is, I have no clue what time spy result we're gonna even get on this. I'm not anticipating very high score. This is really much more about portability and just barely getting AAA levels of performance, right? That's kind of the goal. Okay, so it did not run. It says it's missing, which it should be missing. It says it's installed, but it's clearly not installed. This is kind of cool. So we've got eight games installed. It shows me all of my games that I do have right here under all games. And then it shows you which ones are kind of optimized. And you can see Red Dead right now has an exclamation point, meaning that it's not gonna be that great probably on the Steam Deck, right? So uh, you'll be able to see before you download the game whether it might play or not. Um, and certain games that have like the green check mark, that means that the game is almost for sure guaranteed to play really well, at least in theory, all right? So right now, these are the installed games that we have. We've got Apex, Cyberpunk, Dying Light 2, Elden Ring, God of War, Hogwarts Legacy, and Tomb Raider and The Witcher 3. And I've got a few games installed on the laptop as well. And we're gonna be at least doing some basic performance comparison between uh, three or four of the games today. But I wanna try all eight of the games that I've installed on the Steam Deck. Um, so let's go ahead and get this unboxing done real quick. Now I did buy this laptop, like I said, for $549 uh, over some holiday sales in early December. It wasn't a Black Friday deal, but it was like, you know, a Christmas sale. And I would anticipate that this laptop will go back on sale at some point. I've got a link in the description if you want to check it out. And uh, if I do see this laptop on sale again, I am probably going to be recommending it because uh, it's such a crazy good deal. I think this may have had a plastic wrap over it initially here. As you can see, it's basically just the laptop inside of foam pads. This is the most bare bones unboxing experience I think I've ever had in my life. All right, so there's the Lenovo. All right, so this guy is very portable. It's got a very small overall uh, form factor. Even the power brick is very small. It's only 100 and 35 watts, 135 watts to the uh, the power brick. And the 3050 Ti does not need much juice, right? The 3050 Ti in this thing is a lower power limit GPU from the get-go. And uh, this has also got some bare bones ports on it as well. So let's take a look at the ports. Uh, this is, I believe, I believe these are two USB 3s. We have two USB A's. One is a USB 2.0 and one's a USB 3.2. Now the HDMI is a 1.4 B, which is not very good uh, for sure, right? And then we do have one USB C 3.2 Gen 1. So that's good. And that'll give us some uh, high speed functionality. So one of these is supposed to be, let me get the light down and point it just a little better and boom. All right. so. We have a headset port, two USB A's on the right, and one of these, I mean, they both have the USB super speed symbol on them, so I don't know, I don't think either of those are 2.0, but that's what the website says. So that's a little weird. On the left, we have our power adapter port, ethernet port, HDMI 2.1, and then our USB-C 3.2. So that should be a very fast port. 
Um, and I'm not sure if that's going to support DisplayPort or not. We've got ourselves a nice clean black plastic for the whole laptop. Okay. It's not, this is not your high end premium machine. This is not going to have a uh, metal. The top lid is plastic. Everything's plastic. Okay. The hinge does feel good though. See this one solid unified hinge. This is surprisingly firm for hinges and it does go back pretty far as well. Not super far. And the, the nice thing is we also have 120 Hertz full HD display. Okay. That's phenomenal. Notice that we have three performance modes in the Lenovo Vantage software. We've got performance mode, balance mode, and quiet mode. We're going to do our tests in performance mode. And let's go ahead and get ourselves a baseline level of performance inside of 3D Mark. The, the biggest drawback to this laptop is definitely eight gigs of RAM and the small SSD size. Those are the two things that are like pretty bad about it. But the nice thing about those is that they're changeable and upgradable after you buy it. So at 549, that still gives you like say a hundred or $200 to upgrade your RAM and SSD and still keep the price under 700 bucks. Look at this. It's, it's got a nice backlight to the whole keyboard. It's the exact same layout as the Lenovo uh, Legion 7i. And it feels good to type on overall. It's got more flex though. It's got a good amount of flex. Notice that we're pulling 85 watts of power to the 3050 Ti in this machine, which is a good amount of wattage for a 3050 Ti. It's on the higher side, all right? A 3050 Ti uh, can be specced, I believe, like down to like 35 or 45 watts. So having 85 watts in it is basically double the base. <clears throat> and I gotta say the fan noise right now with this Lenovo IdeaPad's not that loud. It's not that loud. I got a notification that it wanted me to restart the laptop. So let's go ahead and get the laptop restarted. Wow, we got 6,144. CPU score, 5,402. That is pretty dang good, in my opinion. What? This webcam is better than the SCAR 16 webcam? That leaves me speechless. <laughs> This webcam is actually not terrible for a, uh, that is not terrible at all. Um, especially for a $549 laptop. That is actually pretty good. That is like maybe the third or fourth best webcam I've seen on a laptop this year. It's not as good as the Razer. It's not as good as the MSI, but, uh, it beats the SCAR laptops. And I'd say it's still better clarity than even the Zephyrus G16. Better than the G5. Better than the Katana 15. This is a pretty good webcam for a little cheapy. I love it. <laughs> uh, let's test the speakers out on this guy. Here is Roar by Peter Spacey. Hold on, we gotta raise the artless volume here. All the way to the max, there we go, all right. So you guys, uh, you could see my face there, but um, anyway, the the speakers there were, uh, yeah, we'll keep going. I'll give you a summary after all three songs. So Half-Life by Faded Aeon. Wow, that sounded better than I thought it was gonna. Uh, the mids and highs sound pretty good. All 
Okay, so uh, very little base, but the mids and highs are surprisingly clear for such a cheap laptop. All right. Very impressive uh, mids and highs. And the overall volume's not that loud as well. I'd probably give it like a 65 rating on my overall rating scale. Like it needs to be louder. The, the base needs to be better. For a budget laptop though, a 65 is actually pretty good. Like I've had a lot of budget laptops under 600, 700 that I've reviewed. Even this is gonna be better than even like the Gigabyte G5 on the speaker side of things. So a lot of value being presented right now to me with this laptop, I like it. Uh, let's see here. All right, so at 100% brightness, the display doesn't, doesn't, definitely doesn't look terrible, but I don't know clue what the brightness is on this display. Let's find out. Okay, yeah, wow. It's not that colorful of a display as we were expecting. Uh, it's a cheap display, right? This thing's 549 laptop. It's kind of, it's, it's, yeah, it's not gonna be that colorful. All right, here we go. So we got 59% of sRGB, 44% of Adobe, 44% of the P3 color gamut. Again, uh, my tool underestimates. Keep that in mind. For brightness, we got seven nits brightness at the low end. That's very dim. At the high end, 252, which is not bad for a $549 laptop. 1,010 to one contrast ratio. That's also a pretty good contrast ratio for a laptop like this. So uh, indoor gaming, 250 nits is gonna do pretty good. It's not gonna be amazing, but, and the, and the color ratio, I mean, for, for a cheap laptop, 120 Hertz, this is still pretty good display for the money at 549. At $899 price point, it's kind of a meh display for 899. If you were to pay full price, I wouldn't recommend paying full price for this laptop. The backlight on it is a very good backlight. So I just point the cameras away. You can see the, the backlight on it being very bright, very bright, uh, vibrant. It's only one color, it's only white. There's no coloration to it that I know of. You gotta keep that in mind. The layout though is excellent, right? You can turn the keyboard backlight off with FN plus space bar. You got volume hotkeys, you got your full F1 through 12s. Uh, all the spacing on these keys is good. The number pad is good spacing, full size arrow keys, home and page up, page down. This keyboard, has it all, in my opinion. It's a really great all-around keyboard, and the only downside to this keyboard is the keyboard flex, because it does have some decent flex. It's much more flexy than what the Legion 7 or maybe even the Legion 5 would be, because it's on all plastic chassis, right? So that's kind of like the big reason why it's uh, gonna be more flexy. So if I do a flex test real quick. So flex, moderate flex. Corners are usually so solid, but on here we even have some flex. Some flex, a lot of flex in the middle. Going through the touchpad area, just a little bit of flex, a, little, a bit of flex. Corner, not as flexy, just a tiny bit of flex. Over here, definitely have some flex. Not too bad for a corner side, but some flex over here too, which is a little bit rare. No flex here, no flex, no flex. I'm guessing that's where the rests are probably for the key, uh, for the under part of the laptop. Some flex in the middle, no flex here. Not much flex here, just a little bit. Decent amount of flex right there. And going through the middle, we get a lot of flex around the keyboard area, right? So cheap laptop uh, as far as like rigidity goes, but it's not like it's gonna fall apart on you instantly or something. This should in theory hold together really well. Um, and I just love the layout. And this thing should be an excellent typing experience overall. It's got a decent key travel and good key feel and a great backlight. So for the money, I like the keyboard. The trackpad, let's talk trackpad for a minute. So the trackpad here is again gonna be a money saver trackpad, plastic trackpad. Um, plastic trackpad, the problem with those is that when your fingers get wet or if you're even a little oily, it gets a little more sticky and doesn't glide as smooth as a glass trackpad, in my opinion. That's the biggest problem with them. Uh, that said, this thing seems to click just fine and the functionality is here. The functionality is here and the size is pretty good. The placement is good. Uh, and this will work just fine as a trackpad. It's not like it's gonna be terrible experience, but it's just not gonna be as premium experience as a glass trackpad would be. But I would never, I would never expect a glass trackpad at this price point. It is basically never gonna happen unless you're buying like a used laptop that's a couple years old maybe or something. So um, that's their only option to get a better trackpad at this price point. Our power button right here is in the middle and it seems to be only white light. It doesn't have uh, the fancier multicolor RGB, 
uh, that when you change the performance mode in Lenovo Vantage changes colors. Overall, the inputs here are pretty good. The, the ports are pretty mediocre. You do have that USB-C though, that's nice. Two USB-A's on the right. It'll work for most things just fine, but you might have to get a USB-C dock if you need to plug in more things, all right? All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and we can use the, oh, we can use the, interesting. So we can use the, the joysticks to control. I should probably zoom out just a little more so you can see the joysticks. And then we press A to play, A to select. All right, so we are in uh, window borderless right now. Let's see if we can change that to full screen. Our resolution is 1280 by 800. So we don't have frame generation or DLS, DLSS support on this laptop, which makes sense, right? Uh, we do have dynamic resolution scaling with AMD FX super resolution. We have that turned off right now. Uh, for our preset, we're just gonna set everything to low, okay? Uh, but we wanna turn off the uh, super resolution. All right, so uh, looking at our FPS right now, it's showing 45. That's pretty playable from a casual gaming perspective. 40 FPS now that we're entering an area where there's more NPCs. Though, did you notice how much fewer NPCs there are? There's very few NPCs running around. Um, I believe that's part of the low settings. It turns off the number of NPCs. Okay, so we ended up with 39 FPS with 19 FPS for our, uh, our men. Not terrible. Let's go ahead and try hopping into some gameplay. Getting F uh, 42 FPS right now. Let's go ahead and kill and hide the body. I don't usually play on controller, so this is gonna be a little interesting. I'm definitely playing the game pretty well, but it's not like uh, it's not like it's super smooth. We're almost gonna die. Oh, that's grenade! Oh my goodness, I'm almost dead. You know, since the display is so small, it's kind of hard to see the details on where you need to aim. Aiming down a sight like iron sights. <laughs> I died there. So we're getting 35 FPS. It seems pretty smooth. You know, for a handheld experience, it seems pretty, pretty decent. So right now we're utilizing 24 watts of battery. We're at 79%. You know, from a gaming perspective, uh, the speakers are pretty good for something being held to your face, right? If you're holding it only a few feet away, it feels pretty dang good, I think. So 30 FPS now in this section, and we're all on low settings, right? So uh, let's pop into settings again, and let's try using uh, FSR to boost our FPS. We're gonna do quality to start with. That reduces our resolution and upscales. Um, quality FSR is not too bad. It's, it's definitely noticeable kind of blurring of the details. Um, whereas DLSS on quality, it's, it's harder to know the, notice the visual difference. So FSR is not quite as good in my opinion, but it's not terrible, right? Especially compared to other handheld devices like the Switch. These graphics are very impressive compared to a Switch. All right, well, that was, that was pretty impressive. I, I do think the experience is a bit better now that we've turned FSR on to quality. Visually speaking, it doesn't look too big a difference, but the extra 10, per, 10 FPS or so we got from FSR definitely boosted the performance into a more respectable play, uh, player frame rate. Let's go ahead and pause this. I really love this part of the Steam Deck. If I just press stop, this thing goes into sleep mode, okay? It goes into a sleep mode, low power mode, allowing you to quickly and easily repower it back on 
and you can resume wherever you were at in the game instantly. I love that. Gaming laptops don't have that feature pretty much. The sleep mode is not as nearly as efficient um, for like portability. That's another advantage to the Steam Deck right there. We can't match the resolution exactly, it looks like. Maybe. No. So we will not be able to match the resolution exactly, but we'll be able to go within 80 pixels of it at 1280 by 720. So it's important to recognize that, though our performance is going to be so different anyway. All right. So we're going to start off on low settings with no FSR. Interesting. Why are we only getting 45? I feel like we should be getting more FPS than this, right? Fifty. Interesting. Are we still in performance mode? We're going to double check our settings, make sure our settings are correct. But uh, okay, now we're getting way higher FPS. 80. But our averages were very low at the beginning. They weren't much higher than the Steam Deck there at the beginning, which is very interesting to me. Um, still, these averages seem low to me. I want to make sure that we're in the right uh, Lenovo Power Profile setting. We did get a little bit of stuttering there. I am noticing, I think, more NPCs. 39 FPS on the Steam Deck, uh, 52 on this. I don't, I think something's going on though, because I feel like we should be getting higher FPS than that at this resolution. You know, I was expecting more FPS than that. Go ahead. I'm going to do it one more time to verify. We're on all low settings, uh, though some of these are set to medium. This is the low preset, which is what we are expecting. Let's run this benchmark one more time. On the Steam Deck, we're starting out at 46 FPS right here, 44 FPS. And I'm gonna switch to the Lenovo here in a moment when we get through the same scene or we'll get to about the same area. All right, so there's the Lenovo doing 50, 45, such a similar FPS range, which is so interesting to me. Isn't that incredibly interesting? With this, with and the Lenovo is actually on a little bit less, um, a little bit lower resolution at 720p. Huh, very interesting. Um, but now that we are now that we're out in the outdoors, look at the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck doesn't like the outdoors. We're only doing 40, 39, 35. Looking at these palm trees, 44, 47, 50. Now that we're looking up at the sky, um, peaking at 55. Looking at the Lenovo again, now we're doing 55, 60 now that we're out in the outdoors, which is definitely higher than the Steam Deck. Um, oh, now we're doing 25, 27. I think these NPCs definitely impact performance. 30s, 45, 50, 60. It's amazing how similar the performance are between these two. Wow. Okay, uh, that said, our Steam Deck performance was... 48 FPS, 48 FPS, and our 3050 Ti was 55. So definitely a lot better, but we're not taking advantage of DLSS, right? That's the thing. Um, let's try FSR on both. Let's try FSR enabled on, sorry, FSR enabled on the Steam Deck, because that's the best we got on Steam Deck. And then we're gonna do the same setting on the laptop, but we're gonna use DLSS instead because that is the comparable setting for the laptop. So we have DLSS on quality and also notice that we did load faster on the laptop. It took longer to load back into the menu. Our Steam Deck settings are gonna be FSR set to quality. Our laptop settings are gonna be DLSS set to quality because it's a NVIDIA GPU so we can take advantage of that. Now this is not, this is inherently unfair, but it's also built into uh, the system and the performance you can expect from the system is gonna be the same uh, or it's gonna be like the scaling, like just cause it's not a fair test doesn't mean that it's inherently a bad test, I guess. I just think it's a fair test in the sense that uh, 
you're going to get what you pay for largely. Um, but a bigger laptop's going to have DLSS. So here we are kind of side by side right now. See if I can get these to be mostly in focus at the same time. I don't know if we'll be able to. Very interesting results with, uh, with FSR enabled. Now we're hitting 59 FPS, 52, 51, 53, 56, 53 up here. Oh, it's interesting how, how close these two are, even with DLSS enabled. Now, uh, let's do an, an, another Lenovo test where we bump everything up to full HD, okay? And uh, we'll see what we get when we bump everything to full HD. 47 FPS on the Steam Deck and 56 FPS on the laptop. So that's a smaller difference than I thought it would be. I'm be honest, I thought that the laptop would do probably 70, 80, 100 FPS. Let's try bumping the resolution up to 1080p and redoing this test and see what we get at 1080p. I wonder if we're CPU bound in this scenario and we'll, I wonder if we're gonna get similar levels of performance or if it'll be massively CPU bound or sorry, or we'll be massively GPU bound. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so uh, our graphic settings are set to low but DLSS is on quality. Now we're doing 1080p. Right now we're using DLSS, we're at 1080p, where everything's set to low. Our FPS looks the so, so similar to what we had before, which means that we were basically CPU bound in that title and the Steam Deck uh, remarkably uh, was able to keep up for the most part because of that being, because of we were being CPU bound. Um, now that we're being more GPU focused at 1080p, our, our frame rates are still almost the same, and yet uh, our resolution is so much greater now. So that shows you that the laptop can scale up to 1080p and maintain performance, uh, where the Steam Deck is going to struggle, I think, big time jumping up to 1080p resolution. Um, our FPS, notice we're only hitting 25 there around the crowds. That's pretty, pretty bad. Uh, going around the crowds there, you're probably going to have some not so playable FPS. So we got 49 now, which is a bit less than we had at the lower resolution. But still, considering that going from 720p to, to 1080p is, I think, more than a double resolution increase, we barely saw a drop in FPS considering how much massively increased the resolution was there. Going into our display settings, I have to show you guys everything from the beginning here. Right now we're at native resolution with no AMD FSR. Render scale set to 100%. Are y'all set to all low? Literally, I believe it's as low as they can possibly get, all right? Here we are in the opening area where we're always testing the game. You can see running around here, we are getting some pretty dang good FPS, um, but certain areas like looking at the fire causes our FPS to dip into the mid 30s. So let's go ahead and do a run from this side to our standard test up to the area over here. Averaging about 40 FPS right now, a little up, a little down from that, which is very good. Um, that's gonna be very playable overall. Now, if we, if we try to do the same test and we go to our graphic settings or our display settings here and we turn AMD FSR on to quality, we get just a slight haze over everything, right? It's a slight haziness to the textures, to everything. It still looks uh, pretty good though. Like it would be playable for me with FSR on quality settings. Um, you can see our FPS now is in the 40s to 50s. Now, instead of dropping to 35 when we look at the fire, we're doing 39, 40. So that's about a five to 10 FPS gain overall running through here. We were doing 40, 39, 40 before, now we're doing 46, 44. So I guess it's about a five FPS gain on average, turning AM, uh, AMD FSR to quality. Go to our settings, go to our display, and we were to set this to ultra performance. It's gonna be very low quality now. You see how the drop in degradation in quality? That's not the fuzziness from the camera. That is fuzziness of the game. It is super low resolution trying to upscale and it's just you lose so much detail going to ultra performance 
Um, looking at the fire now, we're in the mid 40s, 50s, 48, high 40s. It's 45 right now. So 43, 44. So we were 35 at native, 40 with FSR, and 43 with ultra performance settings, which is just not good. So if I were to use FSR, I would leave it on quality only. Native resolution looks very, uh, very punchy and good though, and with decent details for a low settings. Um, and it's still above 35 FPS for the most part. So I would probably keep it at uh, native resolution, everything low in this game, if I could. Notice that we have already hit 50% battery life on the Steam Deck. We haven't even done that many tests on it yet. Probably played games for what, maybe an hour? And we're at 50%. So realistically, your battery life on this is not likely to be too too long, too high, right? So you're probably looking at like two hours of playing a game like God of War. All right, so that gives you an idea of the performance you can get. And the audio experience is pretty good. Um, so in the 35 to 40 FPS range, looks like God of War is finally ready on the Lenovo Idea Pad. Let's hop into God of War on the Idea Pad now. Uh, right now, we're going to try our native resolution. Uh, 1080p, we're using DLSS on quality right now. We've got our graphics set to ultra. Let's try low. But you can see our FPS peaking much higher than what we were getting on the Steam Deck. The lowest so far we've seen is 48, which is not bad at all. All right, so let's go ahead and do a run through. Um, right now, 48 average. This is higher than the Steam Deck, and we're at 1080p right now, which is a much higher resolution, twice the resolution of the Steam Deck. Um, so that's very good. 48 on average, 32. Very good performance. Uh, it's much smoother, much higher detail on everything, too. 47 is our average. That's going to be 7 or 8 FPS higher than the Steam Deck. Let's drop our resolution down. I think we can be able to match... The resolution exactly. So let's go to our display. Right now we're at 720p. All right, and our graphics settings, we're setting on low still. It's so interesting, we appear to be CPU bound. We appear to be CPU bound right now. Isn't that interesting? Because we're getting almost the same FPS. In the last test, we got 47, 33. Let's see if we can push higher than 47 on this. I think we will push a little bit higher, but not by much. 47 for 1080p, 720p, so this is slightly less resolution than what the Steam Deck is. Same settings though. And on the Steam Deck, we were getting uh, right around 40. Here we're getting 53. So that's like a 25% FPS gain in this area. That's a pretty big difference. Um, and, and it's especially a big difference when it comes to making the game super playable and smooth. And then the fact that when we up it to uh, full resolution, 1080p, uh, it still is very good and very playable. So right now we're at 1080p with no DLSS. This is full native resolution. Let's see what we get with fully native resolution. But it's a pretty dramatic difference. I'm just, I'm really impressed with how the Steam Deck is putting out good frame rates at only 25 total watts of power though. That's the thing. All right, so running through, doing the same run through area. Now that we have DLSS disabled, wow, we're actually getting better FPS. <laughs> we got 47 with DLSS on quality. DLSS disabled, looks like we're gonna get a little bit higher, 49. So DLSS may not even help you in this game get more frame rate because we are so CPU bound, it seems like. Like our, our GPU wattage is not hitting 85. So that's another example of our of us being CPU bound. All right, so right now we have FSR enabled. We're 1280 by 800. We're at uncapped. Motion blur is off. We are plugged in. We have everything set to low with RTX disabled. So this is as low a settings as we could possibly get with AMD FSR on quality. All right, so notice how on low settings we have so many fewer NPCs in Hogs. Beautiful. All right, so here we are in Hogsmeade. We're doing 35, 40 FPS. 
I'm kind of blown away that it can even do this many FPS, to be honest with you. We're definitely getting some stutters, just like laptops have. Stut laptops have a lot of stutters too in this game. Down to 32 FPS on the lower side. Uh, we are plugged in right now. We're doing 28 watts, 23 watts, 32 watts. What happens if I unplug? Let's try unplugging. We are now unplugged. Our performance doesn't seem to have been affected too much. We seem to be getting the same FPS now that we're unplugged. That's a good sign. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do a run through. See what kind of FPS range we're getting. We're in 35, 33, 39. So kind of averaging like the 37, 38 range so far. Doing 40s, 35, 32. Thirty-five, thirty-three. 33. So we're doing like right around 36 to 39, 40 in that range during that typical benchmark run. Let's try to hop over to uh, the map, go to the forest area and see how we do over in the forest. So we're getting 40 FPS right now. Again, we're on FSR on quality. Let's try switching to native resolution. But still, it's still pretty dang impressive overall. I wish this was a little bit clearer on the image quality. It's just hard to film. It's hard to film this on a handheld device while still being perfectly in focus all the time. But in general, this is definitely a playable experience. At least so far, we're doing really high wattages. Notice the really high wattage to the CPU and GPU. This honestly might be playing better than what we're going to see on the laptop because of the, uh, the 16 gigs of unified RAM, maybe better performance than what we're getting with the dual split RAM uh, on the laptop. Here, let's see here. Here's a poacher. We can fight some people. I was looking to fight some people. I'm not sure what the keys are to be able to cast. What do I do to cast spells? I've never played this game on the Switch. Or sorry, on the, on the, the Steam Deck. Okay, we killed one. Wow, low settings on this game definitely are quite a bit worse visually than the higher settings. Though this is certainly a playable experience in general. Right now we're at 1080p, but DLS is on quality. We can try that first, and then we can try changing our resolution. Notice our FPS is much higher in this game. All right? It's much higher FPS. But the thing that I'm curious about is our stutter, you know, because we only have 8 gigs of VRAM. Or sorry, we have only 8 gigs of DDR RAM, and that may not be enough for this game. Our, our potential performance is so much better. But our actual gameplay experience in this game is just not, it's so stuttery. In Hogwarts here, this is playable-ish, but the problem is, look at our 1% loads. I just reset it. We're getting okay right now. But the moment I start running around, looking around to new areas, we're just not able to load all those things, all the textures, all the areas of the map into the game to make it a good experience. Uh, so this is this is the reason why you'd want to upgrade your RAM uh, above the eight gigs. You want to upgrade it to at least be 16. This game needs at least 16 if you want to approach a super smooth experience. It's interesting that the Steam Deck does better frame rate wise than this. It makes sense only having eight gigs of DDR4 uh, memory though. So you could definitely play this game, but I'm not saying it's a great experience. If you upgrade the RAM, this experience should become massively better. Massively, massively better. Let's try lowering our resolution. We'll try native resolution, no DLSS. See if that's, I don't think that's gonna give us anything better, but uh, maybe, who knows. Actually, our, 
Our 1% lows seem to be just a little better without DLSS enabled. Uh, I guess not. No, it's still stuttering pretty bad. All right, let's hop into Hogsmeade and do our run down Hogsmeade Street. But in general, I would say the experience on the Steam Deck is actually a little better than this, given the RAM limitation. You upgrade the RAM, it should be way better on this. So that's interesting. So notice how much stuttering we're getting here because there's so much to load inside of Hogsmeade. It's just, it's a pretty stuttery mess, which is kind of interesting. I would say, I would say in general, the Steam Deck, even though it's FPS technically, where it's a little bit lower than what we're getting for our highs, because the Steam Deck's 1% lows were better, um, I would say the Steam Deck had slightly has a slightly better overall experience. I mean, I guess I would say it's noticeably better because of the because of the the better RAM distribution. Um, isn't that interesting? All right, so we got right about the same FPS in this in this section, 43 FPS. Now that we've stopped running around, our FPS did jump up quite a bit into the 50s. Still, I think that's such an interesting uh, discovery though. Like, and that's that's what my goal right now is just to make interesting discoveries about this performance that we're getting. Let's try Dead Space. Let's go to our video settings. Everything is set to low quality preset. Let's go ahead and just change that. Make sure we're in low quality preset. FSR right now is set to balanced. Let's set that to quality. All right, so we're doing 52 FPS. The number to look at is up here. Um, 48, 52, 48, 50. Apparently it's actually not bad at all. Obviously not excellent. You know, there's a part of me that wishes I could just slap in uh, the full 16 gigs of RAM. And that would probably help, help a lot. X Sniper, I know that I know that dual channel memory increases performance. You, um, that's very true. You do want to get dual channel if possible. Um, but you more you also really need sixteen. You need both. Um, but at least if you have sixteen single channel, it'll won't stutter as much. You know. So. GPU is getting pretty crispy. Yeah, we are getting in the 80s on that GPU up there. You see that? 82, 83. Our FPS doing 54. I gotta say, in general, it's been playing pretty good though in this game. A uh, very smooth looking rendering. I really wish we could see our averages and our 1% lows though, like right here on the little overlay. The the system itself registered 53 FPS on average. We were definitely getting around the high 40s to low 50s for most of it. Pretty dang good here on the Steam Deck. Okay, so we're matching the, the settings as much as we can. FSR on quality, which is what we had. All right, uh, very low quality, 720p, FSR on quality. All right, so the number to beat is going to be around uh, 53 FPS. And so far, we've got 60. Oh, you know what? We might be V-synced. Yeah, V-sync is off. That's true. Okay, that's just interesting. Okay, look at that. We're getting 58, 59 again. I want to see above 60 because otherwise it makes me worried that it's being bottlenecked somehow. But it's so interesting how our performance is so similar, at least at low here. Notice that our GPU is not pulling very high wattage, which means we're CPU bound again. Our CPU is doing uh, our, our being our limiter again. That's so interesting to me. So we're gonna end up getting pretty dang close FPS to matching the Steam Deck again at this low resolution. But when we get to, we'll try ultra settings and that's gonna really change everything, I think. That's gonna give the advantage to the laptop in this game, big time. But if you were just to play on low settings, 
Surprisingly, the Steam Deck's performance is super similar to this laptop. Uh, Sniper, I don't think this game needs as much RAM, so I don't think we're going to be as uh, RAM limited as we are in Hogwarts. See, I'm seeing 59 FPS again. That makes me think that we're being limited to 60. I don't know. I guess, uh, hard to say. Average is 50, not, uh, 56 here. Notice the resolution on this laptop is a little bit, a little bit lower resolution than the Steam Deck, right? 16 by nine versus 16 by 10. Pretty dang interesting results though. Uh, let's try ultra settings with no ray tracing. All right, so now we're at native resolution. DLSS on quality, everything's on high quality. Yeah, our FPS is only a little bit less. We were doing 59 here before, now we're doing 51. It shows how CPU bound we were. At native resolution now at 1080p, we're killing it. It's looking good. Yeah, and everything's looking very smooth. Uh, we're not getting stuttering from our RAM being only eight gigs in this game. That issue is gonna only crop up in some games. Uh, where other games are going to be a lot better. Notice our GPU wattage is coming up massively up here to 73, 76. So that's a lot better than we were. I got to say, as a, from a visual perspective, playing at 1080p at the same similar-ish frames is going to be such a better visual experience than playing at 1280 by 800 on the Steam Deck. Just wanted to mention that as well. So 51 FPS here at 1080p resolution, that's pretty big difference right there. All right, so we're gonna go to high quality. We're gonna do FSR on quality, which is the closest we can match. So 44 FPS. Interesting, going to high settings didn't kill our performance. It is, it is less performance though, only at 44. So I think we were in the low 50s range before. Notice our GPU is hitting 100% utilization there. So we are GPU bound. If we were to try to bump this up to 1080p resolution, uh, I'm pretty sure we would be getting really crappy uh, frame rates. If we can, I would really like to try doing that 1080p resolution testing though, if we can get it to work on my projector or my uh, monitor though. So we got 48 FPS at the lower, res uh, running on high. So we only lost a few frames per second. That's impressive. I was honestly thinking we were gonna have a bigger difference than that. All right, so we're at native resolution. Well, we're on high settings right now. Should we see if high settings can do it? I'm thinking it's gonna be pretty high, maybe not, wow. So A is to jump. B is to crouch. I had never played Apex on a controller, so this is gonna show you my aim on a controller. Versus a mouse. Oh goodness, it is so hard to aim. Ah uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, ah uh, yeah, ah uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so our FPS though is the key. We're only doing 45. Which if we're gonna play Apex, we definitely wanna be trying to get our full 60 FPS. So let's go into our settings. So aiming with this, there's kind of a dead space between when you aim and when it goes. But if I aim with the joystick here, I can aim, I think a lot better. I probably need to increase the sensitivity a little bit, but Maybe not, I don't know, maybe it'd be too, it, it seems like it'd be more flick, flickable, I guess. So now the question is, how do I actually get to the menu to leave the game? Okay, all right, I found it, I found it. Let's try changing our settings down to low. All right, so now we're getting 60 FPS constant. That is certainly a lot easier to aim. Oh yeah, just keep sending it to the same one again and again. You really need aim assist if you're gonna to try to play this game on controller. Thankfully, this game does have aim assist. So 60 FPS is possible on this game. Uh, and we are using a lot of the GPU to do it though. We're at 90%. So there may be times where you're gonna still drop below 60 FPS. 
Um, I'll be able to use hip fire with the prowler maybe to kill some things. So hitting 60 FPS nonstop, the game is looking super fluid and smooth. How do I reload? Oh God. Our FPS did drop significantly below 60 though. Come on, I just want one kill. Oh my goodness, we almost got one. Oh, we're dead. Um, so in the smoke there, we were definitely dropping an FPS down below 60 pretty noticeably. I, I saw in the 40s or 30s or something. How are you supposed to like handle recoil and burst weapons? Oh my goodness. Maybe we can take this guy's kill. Come on! No! We couldn't even steal his kill! Oh my god. Okay, we're dead. All right, that's the Apex Legends on the Steam Deck. It's a pretty good experience, I would say. Um, surprisingly good, but it's obviously not a high refresh rate um, and sucky, in my opinion, playing Apex without a keyboard and mouse. Now that's obviously gonna vary a lot from person to person. So here's Apex Legends on the laptop. I'm anticipating hopefully a very good experience. Uh, let's take a look at our download speed on the Steam Deck right now, because I am downloading The Witcher 3. This might interfere with the stream. Let me know if the stream starts lagging at all. So our peak speed right now is 53 megabytes per second. So 52 megabytes, 54 megabytes, Disk usage is also about 57 megabytes. That's very good Wi-Fi speed. But I gotta tell you, like I was trying to download stuff on the Steam Deck in the room outside, in the living room out there, and the Wi-Fi speed was nowhere near as fast. Uh, we do not have Wi-Fi 6E or 6 on the Steam Deck. It's just Wi-Fi 5, I believe. Five gigahertz only. So it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna go through walls as well as Wi-Fi 6 does. And uh, the, the speed though, when you're in the same room with a good signal is very comparable to the Wi-Fi 6E, at least uh, on my fiber internet. You know, this is like 500 megabits basically going at 55. And it is um, not the only thing running, I don't think. All right, so right now we're on high settings. Let's just verify our video settings. Right now we're on the high settings. This frame rate is not amazing. But oh my gosh, this is such a better gameplay experience than playing on the Steam Deck for this game. At least for me, it's night and day. Holy schmoly. All right, and this is on high settings. So let's try slapping it down to uh, low settings. Now, let's see if we can hit the 120 refresh rate of this display. Well, it looks like we are. Sadly, it looks like there is some ghosting on the display. And the response rate is not amazing. Much better than the 60 hertz display of the of the Steam Deck though. I'm pretty sure I could kill people with this laptop pretty consistently or very often. Maybe not quite play as well as what I would get with, um, you know, an actual high-end gaming laptop with 240 hertz refresh rate or better. But this gaming experience is night and day using a keyboard and mouse especially. I could obviously use the Steam Deck with a keyboard and mouse and have a better experience that way as well. Let's see what we get. Our goal is 120 FPS and wow, we're hitting right close to 120 right now in the game here. We took a hit as we were trying to come up on these guys. Destroying that kid. All right, come here. That guy destroyed me. Um, the, yeah, let's respawn. Hopefully we do better the second time. <laughs> let's try, let's try the nemesis out. 
Um, you know, when you're when you're using a screen like this that has ghosting, it can be harder to hit fast moving objects, right? That's kind of where the biggest difference in performance is. Nice. Yeah, we killed that bloodhound. I feel good about that. Finally killed that guy. That guy killed me like twice. Wow, that guy using the Mastiff got me good. So uh, this is obviously playing pretty dang good. I could play this and not feel too bad about myself. Like I can track targets so much better now than I could uh, on the Steam Deck. Partially because of keyboard and mouse and partially because of the re response rate and refresh rate is so much better now. I gotta say, I'm impressed with the Apex Legends experience on the Lenovo. It's not as good as a true esports gaming machine, but for $549, that is tough to beat um, pricing-wise, all right? So let's take a look at Elden Ring. Okay, wow, we're only getting 19 FPS. Oh, that's not good. Quality set to high. Let's go to low settings. Okay, this feels way smoother, though our FPS is only 38. Um, this feels smooth. Like, the gameplay doesn't feel stuttery. Good enough for me. A uh, little bit stuttery now. Ah! Uh. It has like three different animations for attack. Okay, yeah, we got two hit. Um. Hey, our FPS is doing all right. It felt pretty good. The gameplay didn't feel bad. I honestly thought the gameplay would feel worse. Too bad the FPS isn't even a little higher though. I was hoping we would get a little higher. Getting high 30s to low 40s for the most part in Elden Ring, which is really not that bad, all things considered. It's, uh, this is one thing that's really annoying about Elden Ring is it gives you the wrong keys all the time so I guess E equals Y or something. I don't know. This is not terrible a gameplay experience. I could certainly see people playing this on a budget, but the resolution is really not that that great. Still, like I'm like it's I'm noticing like uh, it's not that smooth. It's not as smooth as a gaming laptop. It's not hitting 60 FPS. If you're picky, you're gonna be annoyed by this. I think. Let's try uh, doing. Anti-aliasing on high. See if that boosts the visual quality again some more. Oh, yeah, that definitely looks better. And the FPS is not much different doing anti-aliasing on high. I'm guessing we're CPU bound right now. Because our GPU utilization is only at 90%, 89%. So we could probably turn some settings up. But you probably want the wiggle room so that in more demanding fights, you're not going to be lagging as much, you know? So we took a hit. It's OK. We took another hit, it's not okay. Uh, we're dead. So our FPS though in the middle of this boss battle is getting in the mid 30s. Still smooth enough to play. It's definitely playable. Elden Ring's playable on uh, the Steam Deck. Let's see how playable Elden Ring is on the laptop. All right, now it's letting me go to 1080p. All right, we're gonna go to low settings. We're gonna match what we did on the laptop, uh, on the Steam Deck, I mean. Uh, all right, so our FPS with this laptop, we're doing 50. I want to point out that we're, we appear to be severely CPU bound again at only 59, 55 uh, watts. We, our GPU could go up to 85 watts. So we're definitely being CPU bound once more. The shadows are getting a bit of a flicker on this low setting. All right, let's try changing our resolution down to matching what the Steam Deck does. Yeah, so again, CPU bound even worse now. Getting 55, 54, so definitely much higher frames in this game on the 3050 Ti. More importantly, the Ryzen chip is the bottleneck here uh, on the CPU side of things. And uh, overall, this is this is definitely playable as well. Our 1% lows are excellent. But I'll bet you we can get similar frame rates on high settings or uh, high, high settings and high resolution let's see what we get so we're at 1080p on high settings now look at us we're doing almost the same frame rate again just a few fps lower 
um, on high settings, 1080p, and oh my goodness, this is so much more detail. And the graphics look so much better on this than on the Steam Deck. Um, so that's definitely a bit of difference. I think we're still a bit CPU bound because our GPU wattage is still only 65. Um, pretty dang interesting. Let's go ahead and fight this guy, see if we get any stutters or anything. Hey, we got four or five hits in. I'm definitely playing a lot better on this than on the Steam Deck, but that's partially because I'm used to these controls. Uh, cause I played this game on PC a bit more overall, obviously going to be an excellent experience. High settings is definitely going to be playable on this Lenovo idea pad. Uh, and high settings was pretty playable on the, the steam deck too. the frame rate gain in this being 10 FPS. It's like a very noticeable gain going from like 30 something up to the forties, high forties, you know? So, uh, it's definitely better, especially since we're at a higher resolution on this system. So maximum settings, ooh, we're definitely getting a bit lower FPS now, 5, 10 FPS drop. And then I think our 1% low is also a bit noticeably less as well. Visually speaking, high and maximum look almost the same. This is gonna be a pretty dang good gaming experience overall. I, I can see a little bit of ghosting on the display, um, but still, I would definitely rather play this game on, on uh, this laptop than on the Steam Deck. 1280 by 800. Looks like we're on, everything is on low. Okay, so wow, we're hitting 60 FPS nonstop. Is there any way we can disable VSync? <laughs> Our GPU is nearing max utilization though. Okay, yeah, now we're getting below 60 FPS. So it was only, only getting a little bit above 60. Um, interesting. Very good performance on the Steam Deck. I mean, there's really no point in sh scoring above 60 other than just trying to benchmark it for benchmarking's sake. We probably have VSync enabled. That's probably why. Yeah, Slick Rounder, I agree. Delta 15 is really good. It's, my, uh, it's definitely my top recommended for if you're going to go to the $900 price point. Okay, I'm seeing some FPS stuttering. We saw some drops down to like the 20s there for a little bit, um, which is not good. Hopefully we don't get a lot of that stuttering. Reaching 100% GPU utilization here, not hitting 60 FPS. So I'm thinking the average in this game is gonna be, you know, like 50s up to a slightly a little more than 60 if you, were, you weren't, you know, limiting to 60 FPS. But obviously you'd want to limit to 60 FPS to reduce battery life usage on this machine. Um, unless you're hooked up to an external monitor when plugged in, perhaps. All right, so 60 FPS nonstop. This is one of the easier areas of the game to run. Notice our GPU utilization dropping down to the 80s here. That means that we have extra GPU headroom, at least for parts of the game. Um, but uh, really it's more about your GPU utilization when you're in the busier areas of the game because that's what you really care about, uh, how low the FPS ends up getting in the really demanding areas. And right here, we're starting to go into a bit more demanding. Our FPS is dropping below 50, high 40s now, mid 40s, interesting. This is still gonna be very playable, even in the mid 40s. Um, so for a portable handheld, pretty incredible levels of performance. But again, we're gonna compare it against this laptop. And one thing that's important to note is definitely that we have that 512 gig SSD allowing us to install all these games. And it's, since it's not Windows, running a Linux Steam OS basically, uh, the OS does not take very much of the SSD space, allowing us to fill it up almost entirely with games. Whereas Windows takes up quite a bit of our SSD space, really taking the space of one of the games up, um, potentially. From the Windows install and then all of the recovery drive partitions and everything. So 
53 FPS on average, though our, our average would be a little higher if we weren't being frame capped at 60, you know, for V-Sync basically. So, okay, so here's our FPS. Wow, the FPS is so similar to the Steam Deck. Look at that, doing, uh, the Steam Deck was doing just a little over 60 in here and we're doing a little under 50 there for a little bit, a little over 70, 80 now. Okay, so a little better on the 30 Ti. It's doing a bit better now. Uh, still, we're definitely getting CPU bound at this ultra low resolution um, and low settings. So you up the settings to highest settings uh, without ray tracing. I think you're still gonna get uh, good frame rates in this game. We can try that as well. We'll try bumping to 1080p and doing higher settings. Yeah, Miss Alexander says, yes, I'm talking about same wattage, 4060, 4070, and that's right, good sir, yeah. Uh, Jared's testing a cut down 7600S. Okay, uh, keep an eye out, do, 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 do. It comfortably beat the 3060 despite being a cut down low watt version of the 120 7600 MXT. Um, yeah, we'll have to see what the 7600 MXT actually does. Well, our FPS performance is much better than the Steam Deck in this scenario. I'm guessing we're not very CPU bound here, pushing our frame rate far greater than what the Steam Deck was able to do. 110, 112. Um, yeah, and I think we still may be CPU bound here because our GPU is only pulling 40 watts. That is crazy town difference. Um, I think I think this shows you where you know the Lenovo IdeaPad is definitely going to excel in certain games that can take advantage of the additional graphical power and are not as CPU demanding. Um, but those CPU demanding games, the Steam Deck's really not much uh, not much behind this laptop. So it's a huge variation from game to game. So I will test this one more time on high settings, no ray tracing, DLSS on quality, 1080p, and we'll see what kind of frame rate we get because that would be the more optimal settings for this laptop. And would be a much better visual experience than this low resolution, you know, 79 FPS right here. So uh, 53 FPS to 79 FPS. And let's go ahead and change the resolution. Okay, so now we're at 1080p. And we're going to do high settings with no ray tracing. And let's see what we get with high settings, no ray tracing. Did not turn DLSS on. Um, so looking at our FPS, look, we're doing... 1080p now, high settings. Our FPS is very good still. And if you were to try these settings on the Steam Deck, it would bring the Steam Deck to its knees. That really goes to show you the, the performance difference between the laptop and the Steam Deck quite a bit better than some of these other games. All right, 62 FPS. Very good frame rate for highest settings on this laptop. You would not be able to get that high a frame rate at all, not even close on the Steam Deck. Steam Deck versus gaming laptop, at least one that's in a similar-ish ballpark. Uh, it shows you that the Steam Deck processor in CPU-bound games and AAA games surprisingly gets similar FPS to a lot of the gaming laptop performance at that low resolution because it becomes so CPU-bound. And we also have a Ryzen chip in this one um, as well. So in terms of raw performance at those low resolutions, the Steam Deck was surprisingly capable, only a little bit behind the gaming laptop. Now, when we upped the resolution on the gaming laptop, we almost always had consistently playable frame rates on higher settings and at 1080p. So if you're wanting to play higher resolution, higher frame rates, higher settings, this gaming laptop absolutely trounces the Steam Deck in that, in the, from that perspective. But if you're just looking for like, casual AAA gaming performance that uh, has portable and is playable on a battery to go basis, the Steam Deck really surprised me. It really performed well overall, much better than I thought. And I'm just thinking like, you know what? I would love to take this thing and play some games on an airplane or like I'm ready to go I'm ready to go on vacation and just play lounging on a beach playing this or something, you know, I don't know. Maybe the screen wouldn't be bright enough in the outdoor light. Maybe in the shade, it would be still bright enough. I don't know. Um, just the fact that you can take stuff on the go, play games is awesome. I love that so much. I, I basically, I think the biggest takeaway was that 
Both of these laptops went under, uh, both the Steam Deck and the laptop went under CPU bound gameplay. The laptop's only a little bit faster. Now keep in mind, we only had single channel eight gig RAM in here. I believe it was single channel. It might've been dual channel. I'm tempted to pop the bottom off and check real quick. Um, I suppose we could use CPU Z to check as well if this is dual channel or not. I don't know if it is one stick or two sticks. Let's find out real quick. 16 gigs is also not enough. A lot of different uh, games out there these days, like Hogwarts really needs more than eight gigs. And the Steam Deck having 16 gigs of unified RAM uh, actually let the performance be much smoother than the eight gigs that we had in this uh, laptop, which also kind of blew my mind that you could even play Hogwarts more smoothly on the Steam Deck than the laptop. Very few games we saw where the Steam Deck's performance was noticeably much better than the laptop, but Hogwarts was one of them. And I, I would attribute that primarily to the, uh, I would attribute that primarily to the eight gigs of RAM. So let me find out if this is dual channel or not, or if it's a single eight gig stick real quick. I believe this is just one, one eight gig stick is what we got. All right. So uh, slot one, slot two is empty. Yeah. So one eight gig DDR4 3200 RAM. We would see better, especially CPU bound gaming performance would be noticeably uplifted if we had 16 gigs dual channel in this. So a lot of these CPU bound games that are super low resolution that we were testing today to compete with the Steam Deck, our performance would probably go up 10, 20, maybe even 30% in some of those games, especially Hogwarts where the stuttering was just awful. All right. Um, so you slap another eight gig stick into this Lenovo. You, uh, maybe you add a better SSD and at the $550 price point that I bought this at, you could do those upgrades and still be around the same price range as the Steam Deck. So, but that said, the stock price of this laptop currently is $899, open box 620. That said, there are a lot of laptops in this price range, like $600 to $700 with a 3050 Ti. There's a lot of different things, especially as sales go on and off. There's almost always a sale, almost always something that's open box that's under uh, that's around this performance level for this money. In general though, like the experience of utilizing a laptop is so much different than a Steam Deck. A, a laptop has a keyboard, it has a mouse, it has a bigger display. You can use it to watch movies. You can use it to do work. You can use it to do your homework. Uh, to do all of those things with the Steam Deck, you're gonna need to dock this sucker to a monitor and a keyboard and mouse using the USB-C port. So it is possible to do those things, but not on the go the way the laptop is. And the way the laptop has all that functionality built in, functionality built in is totally different. Now from speakers, the speaker's perspective, I do think the Steam Deck actually has slightly better speakers. And especially since they're kind of hitting you in the face, you're holding this right in front of your face, you're gonna really hear the speakers and you're gonna hear left, right audio separation a little bit, which is really nice. Um, the, uh, the bugginess in some of the PC games, like in Elden Ring, Elden Ring, at first was optimized for controllers. All the buttons were in controller configuration. They changed the update recently in Elden Ring to be better. Now it's in keyboards, keyboard button functionality, but now on the Steam Deck, it's it's for keyboard and you need the, the controller config options. Maybe in the settings you can change it. In terms of if you're a casual AAA gamer, I can definitely recommend the Steam Deck from the perspective of it's not too expensive, uh, you can pair it, you can stream games from your laptops to the Steam Deck over Wi-Fi if you've got a really good Wi-Fi connection like in the same room. Um, but in general, if you're gonna do that type of gaming primarily, I would recommend something like the Razer Edge. You can see it's, it's almost like a smartphone with controllers mounted to the sides of it. It does have active air cooling. Uh, the display on this Razer Edge is so much better if you're gonna mainly stream games from your PC over to it and uh, the resolution is better on this display. The nits brightness and the color gamut, it's 144 Hertz refresh rate. Uh, this is gonna be so much better to stream games from a powerful source. Like if you already have a gaming laptop and you want to put uh, that gaming image on something portable and play on your couch or play in bed, whatever, this is the better option in my book um, rather than the Steam Deck um, because it's, 
This Razer Edge is like half the size. It weighs way less. The screen's way better. 144 hertz display is actually going to let you play things like Apex Legends or competitive games a bit better, more like you're playing on a console. Um, so the Razer Edge, I think, is the way to go in that perspective. Um, but from a perspective of a gaming thing that you can take with you and be completely disconnected from not gaming in your home, you're always on a, like, let's say that you do have a commute or you're flying a lot. The Steam Deck is going to be so much better than the Razer Edge because you're going to actually be able to play full-blown PC games without having to worry about a streaming source. The Razer Edge is only going to be able to do Android games in that scenario. Either way, can I recommend the Steam Deck? Yes. Can I recommend this Lenovo IdeaPad? Yes, but get the RAM upgraded and probably upgrade the SSD. But do not buy the Lenovo IdeaPad unless you get it on sale. Do not pay the $899 price point for it because it's not worth it. It's better to go for other options at that price point. Now, if, if you can, I really do think going to the $899 price point with the MSI Delta 15 would be worth the money over this idea pad, even at the $550 price point. Like if you can save up the $350 additional dollars to go up the MSI Delta 15, it's super worth it. It's a much better laptop than the Lenovo IdeaPad. But if your budget is strictly like $600 or less, that's where you gotta make the decision between the Steam Deck and the Lenovo IdeaPad. And that's where it gets a little harder. You have to ask yourself what kind of functionality you want in the device, how you're gonna use the device, where you're gonna use the device. And if you wanna focus on more high resolution, higher quality settings, like the Lenovo IdeaPad screen, um, or using an external monitor primarily, the Lenovo IdeaPad's performance is going to scale so much better to higher resolutions and higher settings because the GPU has so much higher headroom. But if you're okay with lower resolution and you're mainly going to just game on the internal display, this is going to be a great experience in many, many ways. Either way, if you enjoyed it, slap a like. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out. Oh, 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 oh,